Greetings and welcome back. In the last section, we learned all about puppet classes and all the components required to build a functioning puppet module. In this section, we will learn Hiara and how to use it to get configuration data in Puppet. So in this section, we will first start by learning how to configure Hiara. Next, we will learn how to use Hiara in modules and we will be looking at practical examples of how to use it efficiently in our modules. Next, we will start by configuring file and data sources which means we will start feeding data to Hiara so it can be used. Finally, we will learn how to invoke Puppet classes using Hiara. So let's get started. In this video, we will learn how to configure Hiara. So what exactly is Hiara? Hiara is Puppet's built-in key value configuration data lookup system. It basically performs two key functions. The first is to store the configuration data in key value pairs and the second is to look up what data a particular module needs for a given node during catalog compilation. Basically, Hira gives us a separate place to store node-specific data. Hira is also not tied to any manifest or module, meaning it is independent and we can use it anywhere in Puppet. Also, Hira helps us to reduce repetition in our Puppet code as we do not have to define different variables and data for each node specifically and we can have global variables which can be used across different classes and modules. We will later see in this section of what do we exactly mean by that. So here is an example of Hiara data within classes. Pay close attention to the variable assignments in this example. We have a function Hiara, open parenthesis, a double quote, then LDAP, then a double colon, and then a variable LDAP underscore servers, followed by a double quote and a close parenthesis. So what is this? The data inside the function LDAP double colon LDAP underscore servers are actually key value pairs. You may have heard the name key value pair. So instead of setting up a puppet variable, you set a key equal to a particular value. When puppet encounters a higher function called with a key, it does a lookup on that key to extract the value associated to it. So this raises an obvious question. If we have multiple files with overlapping keys, how then does Puppet know which keys to use? Well, it consults the Hiara configuration file, which is stored in slash etc slash puppet slash Hiara dot yaml. So let's go ahead and look at the Hiara configuration file in our Puppet Master. So here in our Puppet Master, we will first create the Hiara.yaml configuration file and we will do that via the Vim editor vim slash etc slash puppet slash Hiara.yaml The configuration file starts with three dashes and then it starts with the word backends and underneath it, it says yaml. So let's do that backends between colons and space a dash and then a yaml. This means that we are going to use yaml for our Hiara as opposed to a different type of data structure. The next line tells us where the Hiara yaml files are stored. So let's do that. The next line is yaml between colons, press enter, space, actually we have two spaces, so it looks better indented, two spaces, a colon, data dir, and then another colon. So if no value, it will give default value of slash var slash lib slash hiara. So let's give in this value manually slash var slash lib slash hara and next let me just type in hierarchy and I will explain what this does in a while. 
So hierarchy between two colons, then two spaces, a dash, a double quote, percentage sign, a curly bracket, the keyword client cert, and then a close curly bracket, and then a double quote. Press enter, two spaces, a dash, and then the default keyword or the file name. So client cert basically is a variable name which contains the name or host name of the puppet node which contains the agent. So if the host name of the node is alpha, puppet will look for a alpha.yaml file and it would check that for higher data. But what if puppet does not find the data in that yaml file? Then it would go into the default.yaml file which is defined over here. And then it would look for the variable in that file. So Hiera follows a hierarchy, hence the name Hiera. So for example, if we have two nodes, node1.pack.com and node2.pack.com and have the same value package defined in two YAML files, node1.pack.com.yaml and node2.pack.com.yaml, Puppet will automatically choose the value in the particular node file and we will not have to define it separately in our manifest files in the Puppet master. So after creating this configuration file, we need to restart the Puppet master service. So first let's go ahead save and exit this configuration file. And to restart the Puppet master service, we will type in the command systemctl restart Puppet server. So now we are good to go. So that is it for this video. In this video, we learned how to configure Hira in Puppet.